Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Having a Drink with Mink. I'm your host, Jason Mink. You'll notice a abundance of riches around me. What's that all about? Well, gosh, folks, it's the kind of thing that only happens to a fellow once in his life. What's that? <laughs> For shame. Don't say such things. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? My God. Uh, as far as it goes, it's my 50th birthday, and I figured I'd spend it with my favorite people in this whole wide world, the old guys who like old comics. Uh, cheers to you, my friends. From behind uh, Fort Present. <laughs> Very excited to be back here. Uh, my friends really came through as far as it goes in these troubling times. Gosh, it's kind of hard to get together. You know, you can't all go down to the local uh, restaurant, you know, or go out to a bar or anything like that. But uh, thanks to the miracle of modern technology, I can share a little bit of this birthday magic and a little bit of this drink with you. Now, uh, like I said, it's my 50th birthday. I don't have a cake. I had attempted to uh, put some candles in my drink. It didn't work out so well. But we're not going to dwell on failures. No, no, no. We're going to move right forward. We're going to go uh, right into this first package. And what do we have? It's something from Yeet. Ladies and gentlemen, that's right. If you're not yeeting, folks, what are you doing? Uh, Eat is the official publication of the Old Guys Who Lack Old Comics Network. Issue 36 features work from myself, Eric Luna Salazar, Mike Jones, Tom Lorzeszowski, William Mesner Lobes, and a new story by Mike Barron. But, uh, hey, what a cool book, huh? It's a, If you love old comic books, if you love new comic books, if you just love the medium in general, or you want to support what we do here at the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics Network, the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics Facebook group, uh, by all means, you could do worse, folks. And uh, check this on out. I'll check this on out after I'm done shooting the video. Gosh knows, because there is an awful lot more to get to. Like I said, it's my 50th birthday. Here's a gift from my kid. <laughs> there it is. Daddy man. That's right, folks. I've always wanted to be an action figure. And, uh, you know, considering I'm 50 years old, this is more of an inaction figure, but it certainly, uh, certainly fits the bill. Gosh knows. Thank you, sweetheart, for making this wonderful representation of me, Daddy Man. What's next? Okay, um, we got a mysterious package here. <laughs> I have no idea who this package is from. It was one of the first packages that uh, I received during the big birthday blitz of 2020 here. And uh, I couldn't tell you who sent this along, but I figure uh, with the assistance of Stabby Joe, we'll get this open and we'll see what's what. And uh, hopefully it's not full of scorpions. So what do we got in here? All right, well, <laughs> this continues to mystify what goes on here. There's a little card. What does the card say? A gift for you. What is this gift for me, pray tell? And uh, come on, y'all. Hi, Jason. Enjoy your gift from Adam Seagard. Thank you, Adam. I was uh, privileged enough to meet Adam uh, a couple months back at the Great Lakes Comic Con. It was great to meet him and uh, hang out with him, and I hope that I get to see him again this coming year. Uh, gosh, things are crazy with all this... Uh, all of the events that are happening in the world today, gosh knows. But uh, hopefully I'll be able to see Adam and uh, all of you at the Great Lakes Comic Con uh, next year. So what do we got in here? What's going on? What is it? Hey, it's a flick! We've got the Light of Light featuring uh, Casey Affleck and Anna Pinowski. Her world is a deadly place. 
as is mine, folks, as is mine. And uh, I'm tremendously relieved that this isn't full of scorpions. Thank you so much, Adam. I truly appreciate it. What is next? All right. Uh, this is a gift from my good buddy. Oh, sorry, I bumped the microphone. How unprofessional of me. I'll have a drink to rep reprimand myself. This next gift is uh, from my one of my best friends, David Edwards. Gosh, I've known Dave for a good long time. Dave and I have had some fantastic adventures. In fact, one of the earliest having a drink with Minx is uh, Mink drinks the big easy uh, if you follow the link below you'll be able to check that one out one of my all-time favorite episodes what goes on inside the box folks what could it be hey, hey ah fantastic this is something that all of you old guys who like old comics should be able to appreciate it is the stan lee action figure that's right, folks. Uh, manufactured by Hasbro, the commemorative Stan Lee Excelsior. Check that out. Oh, that's a beauty. That is fantastic. I'll be sure to set him up over on the action figure shelf and show you a shot of it in a moment. Maybe two. It might take two moments. Thank you, Dave. That is fantastic. That is beautiful. And bagged air. There's no substitute for it, folks. You can't get enough of air. All right, what is next? <laughs> this is epic. Love this. Fantastic. We'll put Stan right there, just for now. And we have uh, some wonderful gifts from my brother, Dennis Miller, and his family. Uh, <laughs> Thor right here. Well, Thor was a gift. To me, from me, and uh, hey, I'm a cheap date, what can I say? But uh, man, if you have an opportunity, if you uh, love action figures as much as I do, this was released just a few months ago, and uh, he's one of those uh, Marvel Legends 80th anniversary figures, and uh, he's really sweet. He's definitely an upgrade on my previous Thor, whose uh, head was about to fall off, so watch out for that. So... We will start with the card, Jason, the captain. Gosh, you know, I uh, I always feel so weird when people call me the captain. I don't think of myself as the captain. Oh, sure, I might be uh, the Grand Wazoo, but the captain, that is an exalted terminology for sure. Hey, all right. Hope your birthday is legendary, thrilling, and exciting. And what a card, folks. Look at that. This is embossed. It's like a 3D kind of thing. This is very cool. I think this will become part of the set. What do we got here? All right. Just like you. That is excellent. And uh, I'll make it a point to zoom in on a scan of this. Thank you so much, Dennis, Michelle, Dennis Jr., and Michaela. All right, so what goes on in the bag? Right off the bat, first we have, ooh, what is this? Oh, what is it? It feels kind of like a trade paperback, almost like a collection of comic book pages under one cover. Could it be? It could be something else. could be a, you know... Better Homes and Gardens Anthology. Are they still around? The Better Homes and the Gardens? I should hope so. Maybe it's a makeup guide. Maybe I'm not the autumn I thought I was. Oh, hey! <laughs> Fant oh, man, dude. Folks. Batman, the cult number one, was released by DC Comics in August of 1988. It was a four-issue miniseries written by Jim Starlin and illustrated by Bernie Wrightson. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. What is next? What do we have in here? Oh, we have a... Oh, maybe I should move the bag. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh. Elbow room, elbow room, you got to, got to get you some elbow room. 
My 70s kids will remember that. We have uh, what appears to be a, a vessel. Could it be a nuclear vessel? What do we got here? Oh, it looks pretty good. Hey! Oh! <laughs> wow, man! Paging Anthony Albez. What can you say, folks? Look at that beautiful Betty Tumblr. Now, I'm not sure who the artist is. It's certainly evocative of uh, the great uh, Archie artists of the past. It has a very sort of a Dan DiCarlo sort of feel. It could be uh, Dan. It could be someone... Uh, evoking his work but check that out it is betty from the toon tumblr series uh 2012 archie comics so man that's fantastic ah, i'm over the moon i am over the moon thank you so much guys what next oh and what could this be feels compelling what do we got going on here whoa Oh, man. Oh, wow. That's some kind of fantastic. It's like a Hawaiian shirt. Funky Hawaiian shirt. And this is John Buscema artwork, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Black Widow. I don't know that this is licensed necessarily, but holy cow, check this out. This is fantastic. I have to cut away and put this on so you and I can both appreciate the majesty that is this birthday present. And we're back, folks. Check it out. What do you think? Pretty stylish, huh? Oh, let me tell you, I feel like a million bucks, or at least the next government stimulus check. Am I right, folks? Come on, y'all. Uh, no, actually, this is fantastic. My brother had picked up a couple shirts like this, but uh, this one is remarkable. It uh, contains artwork from uh, a number of different comics. So I get like a very 60s, 70s feel from it. There's definitely at least one Busima panel on here, as well as other stuff that might be from uh, smaller publishers. But gosh, this is great. This is the nicest shirt I own. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dennis. I'm over the moon. I can't wait until uh, things open up again and I can go outside and show the world. Finally, uh, there's another present here. Now, uh, I believe my brother had said that uh, this one isn't necessarily comic book related, but I figure, uh, hey, you're here. I'm here. You saw it. You know, you might want to know what it is. And gosh knows what it is, is it's a mini rice cooker, ladies and gentlemen. You know, when you're a 50-year-old bachelor like me, 50-year-old uh, born again, three, two, one. <laughs> you know, when you're a 50-year-old born again bachelor like me, you can't get enough rice. And, uh... Thanks to the good folks at Dash and my brother, sister-in-law, and my wonderful niece and nephew, now I'll be able to have as much rice as I can stuff into my pie hole. Ladies and gentlemen, gosh, rice, so nice. Come on, y'all. Can I hear it for rice? So, what's in the package? Let's start off with some classics illustrated. All right, we have The Pathfinder by James Fenimore Cooper. Perhaps James's best work. I, maybe I'm biased. We have uh, The Lorna Dune there, R.D. Blackmore. Looks more like Lorna Dude to me, but uh, hey, it's 2020, right? Who am I to say? We got the uh, King of the Kyber Rifles by Talbot Mundy. I don't really know that that's necessarily a name as much as a bad Scrabble hand. Uh, that joke was stolen from an old episode of Mystery Science Theater, so uh, cheers to you guys. What do we got next? Uh, the Octopus by 
Frank Norris. And, um... <laughs> The Octopus by Frank Norris. <laughs> and uh, wrapping up the classics illustrated, a true classic in every sense of the word. We have Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And uh, this book was, uh, sure, it's a little beaten up. It's a little crispy. It smells a little basement-y. Taste that on my tongue, actually. But uh, the price couldn't be beat. So brought those home, put them in the archive. Maybe I'll uh, press them under a heavy book for a while. Good as new. Who, who would ever know? Next up, we have uh, oh, some awesome gold key Star Treks. And uh, gosh, these are just pure eye candy, aren't they? I love these. I can't get enough of these. What next? Oh, speaking of eye candy, I've always been interested, but I never seem to find affordable copies of. Uh, I'll try that again. <laughs> Three, two, one. Speaking of eye candy, uh, I've always been interested in, but can never find affordable copies of. Dr. Solar, Man of the Atom. But uh, I found these three books here. They were less than a buck a piece. And uh, that'll give me the opportunity to uh, check out the good doctor, see what he's all about. And uh, gosh knows, the covers alone, you know, those are phenomenal. They might go up on the, uh, the old wall there. I think it's time for a new batch of comics on the old wall, don't you? Uh, next up, we got some Archie. All right, we're actually going to hit the mother load of Archies here. Uh, Archie number 178, and uh, there it pops malt shop. We got a Jughead, TV based Jughead. Then we have uh, ooh, Laugh number 178 from January of 1966 unless you think this is 12 cents you'd be wrong folks this is clearly the manufacturer's upgraded price here it goes right over top of the the uh, comics code this is a buck and uh, you better cough up gosh knows you don't want the Archie Mafia on your tail and I noticed that uh, this one is actually from the uh, the same culprit but uh, someone thought that they'd be able to get it off. You can't. When you get a little sticker or a little piece of tape or something on your comic book cover, it lives there forever. Accept it. Trust me. You cannot pull that stuff off. Just go with it, folks. Go with the flow. Um, we have some real nice Archie covers uh, now. Uh, I was happy to pick these up. These are in real great condition. Uh, some real lovely Archie comics. We have a Pep number 206, and uh, this features Ronnie in a bikini. And not only that, we have the other three girls. We have Betty, Midge, and Josie in gorilla costumes. I'm sure that's someone's fetish out there, or if it wasn't before, it is now. Uh, what next? All right, uh... Another pep, and uh, here we have uh, Veronica's having a spy party, but it appears that uh, Betty has captured her foe already. And uh, hey, Jughead, he's enjoying uh, some gold, gold finger punch, or whatever that means. <laughs> Sounds pretty dubious to me, but uh, hey, I guess it's free, right? Oh, yeah. Next up, here's an upgrade of a book that I already had coverless, but uh, gosh, for uh, four bucks, it was well worth it. This is Laugh Comics number 162 with a wonderful uh, Veronica Bikini Beach cover. Well worth it. And uh, the story inside is pretty good as well. Oh no! What have I done? What have I done? That's no way to treat your comic books, folks. No way to treat my comic books. At any rate, ah, oh God, oh God, oh God, it's all going so wrong. <laughs> you know who I blame? I blame my sister, Dee Dee. <laughs> oh. 
I'll just put those on the floor. All right, so uh, we're going to wrap things up with a few more books. That's right. We got Skywall Comics The Heap. I'm thrilled to be able to add this to the collection. You know, I've been hemming and hawing over it. It's been in my uh, local comic book shop for a while. They had four copies of this the last time I looked. When I went today, there was only one copy left. And I figured, hey, I owed it to you, the viewer, to have a copy to review on uh, an upcoming Halloween comics for breakfast. We got Skywalds The Heap. I'm pretty stoked, that's for sure. And uh, next up, all right, special collector's edition of Tippy Teen. And uh, hey, I'm a special collector, gosh. And finally, if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, uh, you know that I'm a big collector of the Marvel Tales. Uh, I realized a few years back I'd never be able to afford a collection of uh, Amazing Spider-Man way beyond my price range. But Marvel Tales, a book that uh, was ubiquitous when I was growing up, well, that seemed like an affordable goal. And I've been uh, pecking away at it for a good long time. I'm real close now. I'm within uh, probably 20 books of finishing my run. So here we have uh, Marvel Tales number nine. That's right. And now uh, that's a real cool book. What do we got going on here? It's one of Marvel's mightiest masterpieces, uh, lest you had any doubt. And uh, this reprints Amazing Spider-Man 14. Wow! Wait till you see the Green Goblin. And uh, in addition to that, we have the Mighty Thor battling the sister... <laughs> the, the mighty Thor battling his sister, Sandow. I didn't realize it when I was pulling it out of the back issue bin, but we also had the Strange Tales reprint, the most bombastic battle in the annals of comicdom. Annals? Yeah, it's annals. <laughs> uh, it's the Human Torch facing the Submariner. So, uh, yeah, this is really cool, and it's uh, in great condition. I'm very excited to be able to add this to the Marvel Tales collection. Uh, we'll actually do a recap video real soon. I'll show you where we are as far as it goes. Maybe talk about some of my favorite covers. Uh, there's a lot to uh, say about those Marvel Tales. Even though they're reprints, uh, they occupy a very interesting place and time as far as uh, historical books go, and, uh, you know... They were poo-pooed a lot back in the day, but these days, poo-poo, it powers our cars, doesn't it? Well, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this very special 50th birthday edition of Having a Drink with Mink. I'm your host, the very special 50th edition Mink. Um... My mask isn't here, but uh, you may have noticed uh, advertisements for the old guys who like old comics face masks. Now you can stay safe in style with the old guys who like old comics breathing mask, available in black or white. My name is Jason Mink. I'd like to thank my brother, Dennis Miller, my best friend, David Edwards, Adam Seagard, Mike Jones, and you, the viewer, and you, everyone who's thanked me and uh, given me the birthday props on the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics Facebook page and uh, the Old Guys Who Like Old Comics YouTube page, we do it for you here, and uh, we're looking forward to doing it for another 50 years. So thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time on Having a Drink with Mink.